Hey guys, RW here, Mountain Storm. Thanks again for joining me. I'm going to show you how to uh, measure, cut, thread, and install rod ends on uh, suspension links for an RC truck, like a 110 scale RC crawler, uh, MOA, e you know, even shaft issues uh, links like this. It's 3 16 inch rod. We're going to show you everything about it right now. So the idea is to get the end perfectly perpendicular before you start measuring. Okay. Okay, obviously the next step is to take your uh, rod and cut it. So you put the squared off end that you've got perfected right on the hash mark of the steel ruler. So that in this case it would be 109. I'll just show you real quick how I go about doing that. Using both hands, I come down and I block the hash mark on the ruler with the tape just barely. And I try to keep it perfectly in line with it, perfectly parallel to it. Right? And then I, I'll show you how I, I work this so that I like make a flag. I just roll it towards itself, make sure that both sides are lining up into each other. Okay, back and forth. Now I have a flag that will help guide my saw cut. Right? Regardless of what kind of cutting method you're using, you'd want to maybe do it that way. Yeah. All right, guys. Now we're over here at the bench vise. What I do is I take the part the rod that part that I want and I clamp that up and I just let the other part hang wild. And what I like to do is get this thing pretty well. It doesn't have to be perfectly, but I do like to have it kind of in plane to the earth, in plane to the floor here, just to give me some sense of that I'm straight cutting straight up and down. There's my little flag sticking up. And what I like to do is hunker down on it and get my blade till it just touches the tape and then I pinch my thumb on the other side and it keeps the blade from moving and I make small cuts until I can get a little channel started and once I've got a channel started I can put both hands into it makes very fine little titanium ducts. Okay. Now, if I had any sense I would have been wearing a mask, but I didn't. If I die later on today, you'll know why. Breathing titanium dust. Get out of there. Booger. Okay, so I wish this camera had macro, but I got a pretty much of a perfect straight across cut right exactly where I wanted. Maybe just a tiny, tiny bit short. We'll find out in a second. Because what I do is I square it off and then I measure it with my uh, digital calipers and I make sure. Okay, so that worked out okay, so now I know I'm ready to chuck it up in the drill.
let's make uh, some threads on this rod. So I've got it in the vise. I've got it tightened down. I used a block to square it. This is the Molly D. Right. If you haven't used your, uh, your your threading die, make sure you got lube on it. Stuff really stays in there for a long time, so once you've got some lube on it, it tends to stay in there. I put my thumbs together, center it over the die, so I've got this thing going on, so I can feel the center, right? And that's how I'm going to uh, start the threads. I'm going to be pushing straight down on that chamfer. I work with my whole body. Sorry about blocking the view for a second here. But that's how I do it. That first little quarter turn gets a thread started. Be careful not to rock it. It'll break the thread starting thread off. Put your fingers back in the center again. Now another quarter turn. Okay, you can really tell that it's starting to get on there now. Now, by the time I've gotten this far, I'm three quarters of a turn, I've almost gotten all the way around. Before I back it up any, I like to go at least one time around. Okay. Now, I back it up until I feel the thread break. You'll feel like a little hump. It's like going over a hump. Boom. And that's breaking off that, that chip from the thread that we're forming. At this point, I like to put a little more lube on it just to get it going, and then I won't have to think about it again for a while. I'm going to try and move as quickly as I can, but there's really nothing super fast about threading. It's a four uh, cutter die, which means every time you move back about a little more than a quarter of a turn, you're going to clear a chip. The deeper down you go, the more important that becomes. In the beginning, you got to be careful. You don't want to jump right off it. But we're on there now. I don't know if you can hear that sound. That's the sound of the titanium being peeled back by this high-speed steel cutter. Quarter of a turn, you hear that? Anytime I start feeling too much resistance, I'll, I'll just put a couple drops. About a half turn back. Go about a quarter, and then I turn back about three quarter. Go about a quarter, turn back about three quarters. I don't like to force it through the titanium. You can be more aggressive with softer metals. But the titanium, I like to fully clear the chip. So I'll come all the way around 100%. And this threading die happens to be about 10 millimeters in thickness. So once I see the, the head of that rod, hear that? That's the sound of give me some lube right now. Okay. Don't want that sound. It's just a one of these things, you've got to do it a bit of, to get good at it. It looks simple, but when you try and do it, if there's some reason it's not working, you got to troubleshoot it, figure out why it's not doing the way you want, and then learn the technique that will make it do what you want. It's mainly about keeping everything perfectly perpendicular. And that thing comes up right there. That should be about 10 millimeters. So I'm going to check that with the caliper real quick, like. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is to stop the camera. I'm going to show you all these threads. I mean, all these nice threads I've just made here. Okay, no macro, so I can't really show you the, uh, the threads up super, super close. We'll go ahead and put the caliper on there. It's set to 10, and it is. It needs like one more, maybe one more thread on it. So that's why I stopped there, because once it pokes up just a little bit above my die, 
then I know I'm, I'm done. But I, I like to stop beforehand. I have no problem with threading the whole thing back on there and finishing it up. Okay, and I'm, I'm just going to finish it up real quick. Okay, so here we've got the, uh, the threaded rod. It's threaded to uh, 10 mil on each end, right? It's got a nice little chamfer on it. It'll really help. Now, if you don't have a tap, you can muscle one of these on. This is a, a Traxxas Revo large rod end, okay? And, and um, I start with the ball out, okay? So I can clamp it in the vise. Now, if you wanted to, you could muscle this on, but I'm going to show you how I do it. Okay, what we got here is the Traxxas Revo end. It's just clamped in the vise. Okay, and I take my cordless drill with a 1032 tap, and I just go part of the way down. That's it. I don't go it all the way. Okay, I leave that in there for now. And here's my here's my rod. And I thread right into it. As you can see, it starts off pretty easy, and then it gets harder. This is when I swap ends. Right. There's a lot of different ways you can wind this on. My fingers are pretty strong, so I can crank it on down. But that's how you install the rod end. Now you can use padded pliers, a lot of different things. However you want to do it. And you crank it on down until you don't see any thread and then you'll know you've got it just right. It's starting to wear my fingers out. Okay. Yeah, it's just about perfect. Okay, so I'll show you the next one. Okay, and then installing the ball is pretty easy. I take the ball, I put it on a flat surface, and I put this over it, and I just press down. And that's it. You've installed the ball. And you basically just repeat for the other side, and you've got yourself a link ready to go. Now, my customer, Sean, over at rccrawler.com, he wants to, rccrawlerforums.com, he just wants the rods. He doesn't want the rod ends. But I wanted to complete this uh, tutorial, this how-to, by just showing you pretty much how you would complete your rod end. Now, in another video, I'll show you how to uh, do custom bends, make custom bent links for either for tie or for uh, suspension. And... Uh, I hope this was helpful to you guys. did my best to try and break it down, make it as simple as possible so you could understand the process and try and replicate it yourself if you have the tools and the space to do it. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Thanks for supporting Mountain Storm. And you can always reach me at rw underscore k-e-e-t-o-n at yahoo.com or you can send me a private message at rccrawlerforums.com where I'm Mountain Storm and I've got a little blue vendor star.